In this video, we'll discuss some key Adobe Miner concepts. Specifically, we'll talk about the architecture of the Adobe Miner application suite. We'll talk about deployment options. And we'll also cover some various aspects of the migration process itself. The Adobe Miner suite is broken down into two major components. We have the Adobe Miner core, which is effectively the control plane of the overall application suite. It's a single pane of glass that will allow you to configure migrations and actually monitor those migrations from a single vantage point. Behind the scenes, the Adobe Miner core issues instructions to the Adobe Miner proxies in order to actually execute the migration. So the proxies are effectively the worker bees in the overall operation. Now there's two different flavors of proxies. There's an SMB proxy for Windows environments, and there are NFS proxies for Linux or Unix environments. These proxies can be combined in any numbers independent of each other to cover mixed mode environments. And as I mentioned before, they execute instructions as directed by the core. The deployment of the proxies is completely flexible. SMB proxies can be deployed in any number independent of the NFS proxies and vice versa. They also allow for advanced bandwidth throttling. So for situations where network bandwidth is at a premium, each of the proxies can be configured with a bandwidth schedule with various thresholds of bandwidth for given times of days that the band that the the proxies will enforce in order to manage bandwidth on the given network. Now, as far as the deployment options go, the Adobe Miner Core, that can be deployed as a pre-built virtual appliance that's complete with a pre-configured operating system. We also have an option that can be deployed on Red Hat systems or CentOS systems as a simple Red Hat package. The proxies follow along somewhat in terms of the NFS proxy can be deployed as a OVA file, again, on a VMware environment in the, in the ESX server, or can be deployed on an existing Red Hat server as a Red Hat package or a CentOS server. For the SMB proxy, we don't redistribute Windows um, since it's not an open source operating system. So the approach there is a small Microsoft installer file or an MSI file, and that installs a small service onto an existing Windows server. Now this Windows server can be a virtual machine or it could be a physical server. It really doesn't matter. In both cases, the proxies run as a small service on those particular servers, and then they communicate over IP back to the Adobe Miner core. As far as a minimum setup, you always have to have Adobe Miner Core. That's, that's a requirement. And then you have to have at least one flavor of proxy, either SMB or NFS. Now, for Adobe Miner, some key concepts. Um, when we're talking about migrations, obviously we have a source file server. That source file server is going to have content organized into a series of folders and files out on the server. There's going to be potentially different types of user communities accessing that, that content. Windows users will be accessing over SMB um, and using shares to access the underlying content in the file server. Likewise, Linux or Unix users will be accessing their content via exports. And in some cases, you might have an SMB and an NFS user both accessing the same folder simultaneously, and this is a mixed security style environment. Environment. So we have a source file server that's involved in the migration. Obviously, we have to have a target file server as well. And this pairing of the source file server to the target file server is what we refer to as a migration pair. So the migration pair is that combination of source file server and target file server. Now, within the migration pair, we will establish various migration paths, which define the folder structures going from the source file server to the target file server. And these will be accessed based on the security style. Adobe Miner will inspect the folders and the shares and exports and determine whether the NFS proxy or the SMB proxy should be used as the primary mechanism for migrating that data. Once the data is migrated on the target side, we will then have the end users access their shares and or exports the same in the same fashion that they would prior to the uh, migration. The only difference now is that they're accessing their data over the, uh, the new, new target file server. 
A few other concepts that are important to know is in Dobe Miner, we have the concept of a schedule. And the schedule is a logical entity, and it allows you to do things, for example, such as establishing a migration pair, which again is that source and target file server pairing. When you establish that pairing, you can assign that pairing to a given schedule in, in, in the situation where, let's say, for example, you might have multiple source file servers, you can establish multiple migration pairs, assign those to different schedules, and the schedule will allow you to track the progress of the migration on a server-by-server -server basis. Otherwise, all, all of the migration statistics will be aggregated into a summary number. So the schedule allows you to get more a more granular view of your individual migrations. The concept of a window comes into play primarily for switchovers. And so a window is effectively a time slot. And that time slot is going to be defined as a, either being a dry run window or an actual cutover event for a final switchover. The dry run is a simulated switchover. So what Dobie Miner will allow you to do is to define a window of time. It'll allow you to assign capacity to this window of time that you want to simulate a cutover for. And during that simulated cutover, Dobie Miner will execute all of the tasks that will typically be executed during a, a cutover, meaning that it does its final scans and copies of data between the source and target, and it'll essentially time that. When it tells you the, the amount of time that it took, this is now valuable information because you can use this information to determine the, the amount of time required for a change control window for a given amount of capacity that's going to be cut over from a source system over to the uh, new target system. Now, when it comes time to do the actual switchover, the process is virtually identical. Um, Dobie Miner will execute the final scan and copy, at which point all data will should be quiesced on the, the source file server. Data will be copied over to the target file server, and we'll execute a few more commands to update DNS and possibly DFS if it's in the environment, and then have users log into the new server to facilitate testing. But these are major components, the schedules and the windows, and then the two operations, the drive run and the switchover, which are conducted within those, those uh, given windows. As far as the overall migration process here, um, we, we break it down into these major components in terms of the setup of the initial system, and that's where we're doing the initial configuration of the Adobe Miner software suite. We're adding in the file servers and establishing migration pairs between the source and the target file servers. Once that's established, we can then execute discovery. And discovery is a process where we go and do the initial scans of the, the source server. And the purpose of those scans is to give us some insight into what do the file systems really look like? What is the age of the data? How much data is out there? What are the average file sizes? You know, the data of that type of nature. That will help us put together the overall migration plan. Once we've put together the migration plan, we will actually execute the migration. This is in the migration is essentially all of the migration paths from the source and the target that will be defined. The data will be copied from the source to the target. We will enter into what we call steady state where we will automatically run incremental updates. And then once the migration is actually finished, we will reach a point where we want to execute a dry run. And that's going to be the simulation for how long will it take to, to, migrate, to do final cutover of a given selected amount of capacity. With that in hand, we can schedule the actual switchover. Again, that's going to look very, very similar to the dry run, virtually identical. But the switchover will actually facilitate the final scan and copy once that final copy is done, then we actually want to redirect users to our new system and do some user acceptance testing. And after that, we finalize the migration with some final reports over the amount of data that was migrated from the uh, source to the target system. So those are the overall steps of the migration process. Um, and these are the overall capabilities of this system. So in summary, we talked about the overall 
Adobe Miner suite architecture. It's broken down into cores and, and proxies that actually do the work, the cores instructing the proxies on what they need to do. We talked about the definition of a migration pair, which is essentially the, the, the matching of a source filer to a target filer. And then within that migration pair, we have the migration paths, which are all the individual paths from the source to the target. We can track all of the uh, migration activities according to specific schedules that we can define. And then when we reach a point where we're ready for cutover from the old source system to the new target system, we can define windows ahead of time. We can do dry run simulations and then execute the actual switchovers. So that covers really the overall ar architecture and concepts uh, defined with Dobie Miner and then the actual migration process itself.